Hello and thanks for joining us from our studios in Israel. I'm Aaron Porras here with ILTV's Morning Briefing. The Gaza border with Israel has been relatively quiet these last few days as Palestinian sources report significant progress in ceasefire negotiations between Israel and Hamas. Egyptian and UN officials have been diligently brokering talks between the two parties and they report that a lot of trust has been built towards that end. Israel is continuing to allow and in fact increasing the influx of Qatari aid and fuel into Gaza and has also announced plans to expand the Palestinian fishing zone. As a result, the available electricity running through Gaza has been increased from an average of 4 hours per day to 8 hours, and even nearly 24 hours per day in certain areas. Additionally, Qatari financial aid will be allowed to fund the salaries of Palestinian public employees, salaries that had been cut as part of the Palestinian Authority's attempts to bring Hamas and Gaza in line. In turn, the number of Palestinian riders along the Gaza border and the frequency of incendiary kite and balloon attacks have also drastically decreased though neither have ended completely, and Hamas has stated that it does not intend to end the so-called March of Return protests just yet. Still, some progress has been reported. Meanwhile, Egyptian officials are scheduled to visit Gaza again today, followed by a trip to Ramallah to speak with the Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas. Abbas already met yesterday with Omani Foreign Affairs Minister Yusuf bin Alawi as well, who reportedly gave Abbas a letter from Oman Sultan Qaboos describing Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu's secret visit to the Gulf State last week. No other details have yet been released. New reports now show that Iranian infrastructure and strategic networks were targeted by a new and advanced computer virus this week. Iranian officials have not revealed the extent of the damage done, but according to an Israeli Chadashot News report, Iran has admitted to having just faced a cyber attack similar to the now infamous Stuxnet virus, which targeted Iran's nuclear infrastructure. This virus, however, is, quote, more violent, more advanced, and more sophisticated than before, end quote. And this is not even the first infiltration in the last few weeks. Iranian officials have also recently admitted that President Rouhani's phone was tapped for an indefinite length of time, and earlier this month, Israel's Mossad intel agency allegedly gave Danish forces information on a pending Iranian assassination plot. The information has since led to the arrest of an Iranian-Norwegian national and the recalling of Denmark's ambassador to Tehran. Iranian Supreme Leader Ayatollah Khamenei on Sunday addressed the recent attacks, saying, quote, In the face of the enemy's complex practices, our civil defense should confront infiltration through scientific, accurate, and up-to-date action, end quote. Israel has so far refused to discuss what hand, if any, it had in these attacks, though, but it wouldn't be outside the realm of possibility at all. Speaking to the UN General Assembly in New York in September, Netanyahu did vow that, quote, What Iran hides, Israel will find, end quote. According to a federal indictment filed on Wednesday, United States officials have now charged the shooter of the Pittsburgh massacre, Robert Bowers, in what many believe is the deadliest attack on Jews in U.S. history. Originally, prosecutors detained Bowers on 29 counts of hate crimes and firearms offenses, but that number has now risen to 44. Charges include counts of obstruction of free exercise of religious beliefs resulting in death and the use of a firearm with intent to kill. U.S. Attorney for the Western District of Pennsylvania Scott Brady said that the case would be presented to a federal grand jury within the next 30 days. And additionally, Brady has started the process to gain approval from Attorney General Jeff Sessions to seek the death penalty. Bowers is currently being held in jail without bail and will appear for a preliminary hearing in federal court later today. Meanwhile, thousands of people have paid tribute to the 11 victims of the attack over the past several days, with ceremonies and vigils being staged in Pittsburgh and around the world. Survivors at the scene recall a living nightmare during the shooting spree as Bowers screamed that all Jews must die while he mounted his assault. And all this while congregants were gathered for a baby naming ceremony and to observe the Sabbath. But unfortunately, this is nothing new, as anti-Semitic acts, especially from white supremacists, have been on the rise worldwide. Just this past Wednesday, only days after the Pittsburgh attack, the walls of an Irvine, California synagogue were vandalized with the words, F Jews. Canadian Foreign Minister Christian Freeland arrived for a visit to Israel on Tuesday for the first time since Prime Minister Justin Trudeau was elected back in November 2015. She arrived from Jordan directly into a meeting with Defense Minister Avigdor Lieberman and will be in the country until Friday. Yesterday, Freely met with Prime Minister Netanyahu, President Rivlin, Knesset Speaker Edelstein, and opposition head C.P. Livni. And speaking at a press conference with Netanyahu, she began by pausing and first paying tribute to the victims of the attack at the Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh. She then mentioned the strong relationship with Israel over the past 70 years, noting that Canada hosts the world's fourth largest Jewish community. And finally, Freeland also made a special mention of Netanyahu's personal involvement and Israel's exceptional work in rescuing around 800 White Helmet volunteers and their families from Syria in July. 
Netanyahu replied also that the two countries indeed enjoy a great friendship and that he appreciates Canada's support in various international forums, as well as the fact that Canada will not establish international relations with Iran. But more than just a diplomatic mission, this visit for Freeland is also seen as a listening and learning trip, as the Middle East doesn't really fall under her expertise. Ultimately, she's seeking to understand the strategic picture as the different sides see it, and towards that end, later today, she also plans to spend the afternoon in the Palestinian Authority. That's all for now. I'm Aaron Porras, and see you later with our main daily broadcast from Israel at 2 p.m. Eastern Time.